Well, hey, guys, this is Nick of Time checking in with me. Max the Axe, how you doing today, Nick? How are you doing, Derby Verse? We are ready to roll with Mad Roland Dolls, Dairyland Dolls, going up against the Black Sheep from Cincinnati, Nick. Yes, we are jumping right into the action here. Uh, big roster for both these teams. We'll get to it eventually here, but in the meantime, you should know this game is a 7-10 matchup on WFTD TV. You are watching the thrill of the spill. North Central Region playoff coverage by WFTDA TV. We are happy to bring it to you. And uh, Nick, this is no ordinary 7-10 game. No, it's not. Not at any, any way you say it. They're Cincinnati having a little bit of a rough year, but at the same time, Madison having a little bit of a rough year as well. Both these teams stack up very even, though. They've both taken losses, but, you know, but on paper, this is not a 7-10 game. This, uh, the, the overarching theme I've heard from talking to coaches and skaters is that the North Central is the most competitive division, in, especially in the 5-10 uh, to 10 seed area. Anything can happen in this one. We had a fascinating game, a, a real uh, exciting game to start off in bout number one. 129-121, Bruce City beat the uh, Chicago outfit, and we are off. Right now, Mouse in there jamming for Matt Roland. It's Wheezy in there for Cincinnati as Wheezy gets up to the front end. She's trying to get around that wall, gets recycled to the back. Mouse trying to draft one of her players as she greets the front of Cincinnati skater Kenny and Newcomb. And Mouse gets a little bit of help from her friend in the white. Uh, she's still having a hard time with Skater Kenny up there, Nick. Yeah, Skater Kenny all over the place right now. Skater Kenny the last one to beat, and Mouse able to get around. Wheezy, meanwhile, stuck on the back end. Cincinnati in black, if you're watching right now. Mad rolling in white, and Wheezy trying to work around, looking for some help and, and just trying to get something going here. Able to get out of the pack. Dairyland Dolls. Mouse in the pack. Drawing first blood for the ladies in the white, and she alertly calls off the jam, Nick. Yeah, it looks like that's going to be a 3-0 run there. Hot out of the gate, and uh, that's been a standard for Cincinnati. Sometimes they don't always warm up the fastest. Hopefully they, they get rolling here real quick. Captain Hazden confused on the jam line now, number 287, 297, excuse me, in white for the Dairyland Dolls. That's Hannah Barbaric out there for Cincinnati joining back from a leave of absence, so she will be taking her first jam since probably the, I would say around July or June. Well, Coach Quad Almighty told me that uh, he was counting on Hannah today to yes. uh, bring home the bacon. She, she looks ready to go, no doubt about that. This official timeout on the floor is brought to you by Rydell Skates. Rydell is the official skate of the WFTDA. They have unmatched quality and unmatched performance. Look them up online at www.rydellskates.com. All right, well, waiting for this official timeout to get done here. Two, yeah. two teams that have uh, they've played each other a lot over the years, Nick, but not this year so far. Yep, they, you're, you're right there. They haven't played each other. They have played teams that have that have played each other. Um, and, and the fact Try to the do the tri triangulation, and that's probably how we got the seeding that we got, although the triangulation is a tough game uh, to play. You just never know which team's going to show up and how one team will uh, react to another team's style. And speaking of that, too, the other thing to note is that Matt Rowland has never lost to Cincinnati in the playoffs. They are 2-0. I'm sure that uh, Quad Almighty uh, made that point clear in uh, preparing the black sheep. But once again, coming through the pack first is... Is that hazed? I believe. Hazed and confused, but... Uh, the captain, the yep. For naught. Right now, Cincinnati taking the back line of this scrum start. Wheezy on the jam line going uh, for Cincinnati, and she's going up against Magic Missile, number D4 in the white. We're here in Niagara Falls. It's a lovely day, but I tell you what, Nick, I'd rather be inside. I, I would too, to be perfectly honest. All the action going on right here. Is Skater Kenny trying to block off? Magic Missile propelled through the pack for Dairyland Dolls right now. Wheezy having a little bit of a difficulty, but she's going to get through as well. But lead jammer, Dairyland. Yeah, Dairyland coming out hot early here. 
Wheezy trying to make it around to that pack, but. Magic Missile wants that four, but she doesn't want to risk allowing Wheezy back into that pack. So she picks up four. three more, four more. She does get there, four more. Give her four, yeah. That's why the officials are the best people to make the calls, because they're in the position to make them. We're up here in the uh, turn number four. Yeah. We can't necessarily tell when a skater's hip gets past another skater. Yeah, we don't, we don't do math, and you know. <laughs> That's why we're up here sitting on our butts calling, calling the game. That's why we're the people with the microphones. <laughs> That's right. And we want to hear from you, too. Uh, if you are on Twitter, uh, go hashtag talk to the number two, WFTDA, and we will be happy to have a conversation with you. Oh, this is a development now, and we have a major cut track called against Kitten Kicker for Cincinnati. Yeah, Kitten getting called to the box. So this will be a power jam for Matt Rowland. It looks like Mouse decided to call that jam off and uh, set up a uh, specific jammer now for Mad Rowland Dolls. And that's Wildberry Punch, the uh, Team USA alternate, taking the jam line. Smart play by uh, El Machete there, getting her all-star on the jam line in this early power jam, Nick. It's a smart move, and again, yeah, coaching's half the battle here, so heads up play as Cincinnati's got a field out there of three with one in the box, and it's going to be Newcomb out there in the box. And that's Wildberry Punch, and you see her teammates slowing things down. They want to give her every opportunity to uh, pick up points during this power jam. Yeah, coaching can also always be the difference, too, when you have two teams that are so evenly matched, Nick. Oh, yeah. Well, we have our first referee takedown of the <laughs> tournament, and it certainly won't be the last. Not by any means. Right now, this is trouble for Cincinnati. June the Cleaver, the last line of defense on the second pass already. And Wildberry Punch gets through for another grand slam. It looks like she's having a little bit of trouble acclimating herself to the uh, polished concrete surface here, but she is back in the action. Yeah. Well, she's got a three wall to contend with, and her teammates are confident that she can do it. She does. Five more. <laughs> it's basically a three on one out there. As she's getting a little bit of help now trying to break up the wall. Haste and Confuse coming in there. But really, Wildberry Punch doing the damage herself. Coming in with a strong tomahawk. She's going to pick up five more points for the Dairyland Dolls. Once again, if you're just joining us, Madison in the white, Cincinnati black sheep, as you would expect, Nick, in the black. Yep. Right now, Kitten Kicker back out of the box in the pack, trying to work her way around, able to get out of the pack, but of course not lead jammer. And Wildberry Punch, she's showing her punch right now as she's on her fifth scoring pass. Tomahawks calls off the jam before Wheezy can hit the pack. Well, a, a smart play there for Wildberry Punch, just getting as many as she can and, and hitting and quitting that one. Hannah Barbaric now for Cincinnati, getting ready to take the jam against Sugar Lumps for the Mad Rolling Dolls. And this next jam is brought to you by Adam Wheels. They're a proud partner and an official wheel of the WFTDA. Right, Sugar Lumps on the line, Hannah Barbaric, another scrum start going on in Cincinnati with the back line open end on the right side for Hannah Barbaric. She runs into a big Dairyland wall looking to the inside. Meanwhile, Sugar Lumps gets pushed to the inside. Dairyland with the brief pack advantage now, but uh, the Madison pivot, or excuse me, the Cincinnati pivot is standing up. She is rejoining the pack as we speak, Nick. Yep, both packs at full strength. Hannah Barbaric out in front, one to beat, trying to work way around, pack getting pretty thin, and nice, Hannah around. Nice move around, shenanigans there. Hannah Barbaric showing her agility and speed. Sugar Lumps working her way up front now, greets the Cincinnati blockers. Looks like candy kick ass out there with June with a cleaver. June up front, Betty, Buckhead Betty coming in. Everybody recycling pretty well as Candy's back up again, but Sugar Lump's out of the pack. Sugar Lump's finally able to get through, but uh, Hannah Barbaric is in scoring position, and she's picked up at least three now that I can count. But again, we don't do math now. No, no, we don't at all. So. Cincinnati held scoreless up until this point. It looks like the score now going to be 31-4. to four. Just about 22 remaining on the clock, so nothing big, nothing big to come back from yet. Again, if it, if you're Cincinnati, probably not time to panic just yet, but you no. do need to get your footing underneath you. Get lead. 
yep. get a lead. That's what Quad Almighty is telling his team right now. Forge a path for your jammers. The next jammer up is number 44, Murder Her, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, Wheezy, actually. It's Wheezy again, yep. sir. And uh, Mouse out there as well for Mad Roland. Wheezy running up against the front line. Cincinnati holding that back line, and Mouse just stuck behind it. Yeah. Trying to look for a mouse hole, but nothing <laughs> we, coming yet. No. She's having a tough time with it. Meanwhile, Wheezy up front with one to beat, and it looks like she might have an opportunity on the outside. But meanwhile, Mouse takes the inside. It's a dead heat. That's a tough call. Who is lead jammer? Wheezy gets the call. Oh, they're saying low block on Mouse, so she did not get it. Her block out of bounds. So Wheezy actually going to get lead position here as it's just a race right now. Mouse in front coming up to the pack. And Wheezy takes the position that she's got to score for her team. Look at that wonderful Whoa. run on the inside. <laughs> Wheezy comes across with four big ones. Mouse caught up behind that Cincinnati wall, and this is what Cincinnati wants. Wheezy trying to catch up that pack. Pack moving pretty fast right now, though. Well, Wheezy is two, Nick. It's a... Uh, She's in her second scoring pass now. I mean, Mouse is in a scoring pass for the Dairyland Dolls, but uh, it's a uh, scoring pass in name only as Murder Her is working oh. her over. Murder Her having a game right now. She is all over the place. Cincinnati holding that out front with Newcomb and Skater Kenny. And Skater Kenny comes in with a big hit on Mouse. Mouse just turns around agility at its finest. Meanwhile, in the back of the pack, Busta Crimes stepping up for the Dairyland Dolls. Rips into Wheezy, sets her off her tracks, and uh, forces her to call the jam, Nick. Yeah, Mouse not looking too happy after that one easy. Looking looking for a couple penalties there, but ref saying everything's legal. Looks like well, it. Well, this is the uh, North Central region playoffs, and when it comes to playoff time, the refs let them play, and mm -hmm. I am a firm believer that that's the way to do it. Oh, Nick. yeah. Not every hit is a, you know, a penalty. Sure. It's, uh, you know, these are the finest teams in the region, and uh, the refs don't want to be the one to decide the outcome. Oh, exactly. Kitten kicker on the line against Magic Missile. Kitten working away against a big back line of of Matt Rowland here and trying to work around, but she's just getting knocked around. They're closing every door. Meanwhile, Magic Missile able to get out of the pack first, lead jammer. Magic Missile in the white for the Dairyland Dolls of Madison. If you're just tuning in, it's been a uh, Madison first half so far with Cincinnati recently uh, joining the fray. They've gotten lead jam the last couple of times. Madison came out strong early. Madison calls that one, picks up three more. Your score now 40 to 30, or 40 to 10, or sorry, 38 to 10. Again, we don't do math in the booth. We just we just announce what the score is. That's right, and it, and it works better that way because we have perfectly capable non-skating officials, referees to take care of the uh, the you know the strategic the logistics, the logistics yeah. of the mathematics. <laughs> you bet. Hannah Barbaric now getting ready to go against Hazed and Confused or Hazed and Contused. My bad. She's the captain oh. today for the Dairyland Dolls and Hannah Barbaric oh, just Hannah. squirting out of the pack like uh, like one of the cartoons she's named after. Oh, yeah. But uh, Dazed and contused, not far behind. Hannah Barbaric's going to want to pick up a few here and try to call it off. She's on her knees. She does just that. Yeah. Hannah fell down there, uh, tried to call it off in the process. Didn't look like they saw her. And meanwhile, Hayes picks up four more for Matt Roland. So, again, a smart play by my Matt Roland to keep with that one. Wildberry punch. Once again on the jam line, she is the lead scorer of the bout so far. For those of you just tuning in, Wildberry Punch, the Team USA alternate from Madison, Wisconsin, was put on the jam line specifically for a power jam and uh, really made it pay off as a 25-point oh. jam. Cleaned up. Cleaned up for sure. Wheezy now trying to work against the front line for Matt Roland. Cincinnati holding down the front or the back with, with Wildberry Punch back there. Wheezy looking to, to pull off some magic here, and she is going to make it around the pack. Lead jammer, Wheezy. I see Wheezy and uh, Wildberry Punch both basically the same style of jammers. They're long, they're fast, and they're agile. Mm -hmm. You'll see that about Cincinnati, but a lot of finesse skating. That's what they're known for. Wheezy coming up to that front line, trying to get something going. Wildberry Punch right 
behind the pack coming up fast. We'll see I what she can do. Murder her in the back of the pack for the Black Sheep. She had her eye on Wildberry Punch, but she couldn't quite do it. Wheezy called off the track. Another power jam with Wildberry <laughs> Punch in the control panel. Yeah, right now Wildberry Punch on a tear again, picking up five there, and she's going to have the track to herself. Cincinnati with a full pack of defense. And Mad Roland now also with a full pack. We'll see what she can do. Wildberry working against Murder Her, Buckhead Betty, Roughing the Passer, and I believe Candy Kickass. And Wildberry Punch able to dance her way around the outside of turn number one. That will be five points. Yeah, Wildberry. Well, here, Mad Roland's taking the back line again, just letting Wildberry do the work. And Wildberry able to do it as Cincinnati's trying to recycle, just can't do it there. Well, Wildberry Punch certainly picked up a uh, few uh, tips on agility and power when she was working out with Team USA, and she's showing it today, Nick. <laughs> oh, yeah. Another Cincinnati blocker to the box as it's a four on two advantage in the pack that is literally just standing still. It's essentially the story of the bout so far as Wildberry Punch on the power jam for the Dairyland Dolls. Jam times out, but not before she picks up five more. I'll tell you what, you take away Wildberry Punch's score in this game, and the score, she scored 49 points. So again, without her, it's a, a pretty close game, but I'll tell you what, one player can make all the difference on some days. She's been in the right place at the right time, that's, that's for, for sure. sure. And uh, if you want to be in the right place and look at the right time, you got to go to Iron Doll Clothing. They have one-of-a-kind uniforms for the modern roller girl. Get your perfect roller derby uniforms in four easy steps. IrondollClothing.com. Magic Missile, I believe, out there working her way against Kitten Kicker. Kitten, not out of the pack yet, greeting the front line of Matt Rowland. These Dairyland Dolls came to play in the first half. Of course, uh, that's, that's no indication of what could happen with uh, so much time left. There's still 14 minutes, 50 seconds left. Yeah, there's still a lot of, a lot of time on the clock, you know, 15 minutes just about. So and Cincinnati just got to keep composed, you know, chip your way back in this thing. This is by no means out of reach just yet. Power and jams come and power jams go, and Cincy is probably due for a power jam right now. And Hannah Barbaric is on the line for the Black Sheep. She very well may could deliver that. She's going up against Sugar Lumps. Yep, Sugar Lumps. Meanwhile, Matt Rowland taking the scrum start on the back of the line here. Cincinnati with a micro pack still four on two advantage. Outside, inside lane wide open, but Ruffin the passer comes in to close it off. Ruffin the passer with a nice jammer shot. But yeah. how about that? Sugar Lumps off to the races. For Dairyland, the uh, Mad Roland Dolls, Madison, Wisconsin, Dairyland Dolls, number 10 seed, skating uh, skating like a very powerful number 10 seed here at North Central Region Playoffs. Oh, yeah. The 10 seed didn't do this team justice right now. Hannah Barbaric out of the pack, but I'll tell you what, right behind her, Sugar Lumps calls it off. Sugar Lumps takes her four lumps and says, that's enough for now. Yep. She'll let her teammates do a little more. Score right now, 75 to 16. 13 29 left on the clock. And Wheezy getting ready to go again for the Black Sheep. And Wheezy's been doing a lot of damage. She's obviously in uh, excellent condition. Now. Excellent condition. Well, Wheezy, Wheezy and the K Lethal, uh, K Lethal, who is not joining us today, both of them the main two primary jammers for Cincinnati usually. So Wheezy's getting a double workload today. Madison puts out Magic Missile, number D4. If you just joined us, Madison in the white. Since he picks up a much needed lead jam, but how about Magic Missile keeping Wheezy honest oh, yeah. with those long strides? <laughs> Magic Missile's running down Wheezy like a lion after a gazelle. Looking to take the inside lane, Wheezy cuts it off, and it's going to be a foot race here as Magic Missile gets ahead of Wheezy. Coming in the pack, Candy Greaser with a butt block. Wheezy looking on the outside, but Busta Crimes has a couple of things to say about that. Yeah. Skater Kenny, the last line of defense for Sk Cincinnati out in front. Skater Kenny with some agility of her own. She's holding off Magic Missile quite easily right now. Oh. All right, that Candy Kickass just pulled a helicopter there. She, she went down, but Magic, Magic Missile. 
Magic Missile able to stay on the track there. She picks up four more for the Dairyland Dolls. Wheezy finally gets through, calls off the jam. She picks up four of her own. And there were definitely a couple of fast girls on that jam, Nick. Yes, there were. Talk about fast girls. Fast Girl Skates is the first full-service brick-and-mortar derby store in the world. They bring their extensive in-store experience to you online. They know firsthand how to make feet happy. Check them out at www.fastgirls.com. Who doesn't love fast girls? Speaking of fast girls, we're on the track again, and Cincinnati holding down the back line. Captain hazed and contused for the Dairyland Dolls in the white. Newcomb out there jamming for Cincinnati, and Newcomb with a fast break, able to get out in front. Newcomb called, called the off on a forearm major, and not what Quad Almighty wanted out of that jam, Nick. Not at all. This is, again, the nightmare becomes worse for Cincinnati right now as Newcomb, who is also one of their better blockers in the box for at least a full minute here. Three on three pack, and Captain Hazed and Contused makes short work of the uh, three, ball, three wall, picks up five points for the Dairyland Dolls. Yeah, the problem right now, Sailor Scary stuck on the back end. She's just getting worked around by this Mad Roll, and she's going to get called on a cut there. That's... A yep. nice move, but uh, it could be a, yeah. Oh, meanwhile, hazed and contused continues her onslaught. It's uh, just a two-pack, but here comes Buckhead Betty. Buckhead Betty, number 33 in black, to come to the aid of her teammates. And hazed and contused. Well, right now, too, the problem for Cincinnati is they cannot block 20 feet out. It's a shuttle run technique that we're seeing used again. Mad Rowan just stopping everything. And then getting ready for when the jammer comes back in. Again, a good plan it's, that seems to be working on their favor. It's solid strategy, especially in these power jams. And, you know, it's asking a lot of your jammer when you take that strategy. But uh, Haston Conduced, obviously, up to the challenge. Oh, yeah. Nice move inside out. Hazden Contused picking up an additional mountain of points for the Dairyland Dolls. And, yeah. Uh, Cincinnati needs to come on strong now in these last 10 minutes. If you're just t joining us, uh, once again, Mad Roland Dolls, Madison, Wisconsin, in the white with the 88-point uh, lead right now over Cincinnati Black Sheep in the black. So this is another good point, too, guys. I don't know if everyone heard, too. Kay Lethal is actually not playing. Uh, looking at our live feed on Twitter, if you want to talk to us, do the hashtag talk the number two, WFTDA. Uh, talk to WFTDA, and she is not here. Uh, Kay Lethal is not playing today. Well, she might be here this evening if they if, if she makes it in in time. But Power jam opportunity all of a sudden for the black sheep. Kitten kicker is going to have to make it through. She does. She's lead jammer. And darling Nikki, I believe, was called off for Madison. This is exactly what Cincinnati needed, Nick. Oh, yes. This is a dream come true. The Derby gods are smiling. K or Kitten Kicker got to stay clean here, though. Ruff and the Pass are going to come out and join Cincinnati's blocking crew well. of June with the Cleaver and uh, Sailor Scary. Only two out there. It's Wildberry Punch and number 77. That's Stank Girl for the Dairyland Dolls. That's another grand slam for Cincinnati. And as I said, the power jams, if they even out, Cincinnati's right back in this game. Oh yeah, that's that's a matter of fact, you're exactly right there. Looks like uh, Kitten Kicker is going to be sent out on a fourth minor. It was a track cut or a back block. It was you a know, back block. An interesting th thing there about that, too. Fourth minor, so next year, that might not be a problem. That's right. That's right. She would have just kept on skating because I don't know that an official would have called that in a no minor situation. Whoa, that a good move there by Skater Kenny, who comes and tries to cut off the block right out of the penalty box. Mac uh, the knife. I called the Dairyland Jammer incorrectly in her first time out on the track, but she comes back with a vengeance, Nick. Oh, yeah, she's looking to skate hard, working her way right now against Ruff and the Passer, who is stuck to her like glue. 
dueling power jams in this one now. Dairy Land Dolls trying to let Mac the Knife work on her own, and it will. Uh, that's it. The jam times out. Yep, that, that's going to be over there. Well, this next jam brought to you by Print Co. For your league's printing and promotional needs, hit up printcographics.com. That's printcographics.com. Mouse back on the line for the rest of this power jam on Matt Rowland's side. Mouse has uh, been kind of quiet lately for the Dairyland Dolls, but she's certainly going to want to uh, assert herself now in this jam. Those of you just uh, watching, we want to salute you. If you're working at home today, uh, watching on WFTDA.TV, this, of course, is the first region playoff. WFTDA will be bringing you the entire Big Five this year, the East, the West, the North Central, that which you're watching right now. If you're not watching, Oh, Mouse is going to have to sit down. It's a jammer switch. Yep, right now switcheroo as Kit and Kicker back out and through the pack. She's not going to be lead jammer because Mouse was when she went in. So this one will go the two full minutes, it looks like. Kit and Kicker now. Buckhead Betty holding in the back. They're going to try the same strategy that has been working for the Dairyland Dolls. Kit and Kicker having a... Having a go there at Darling Nikki. Darling Nikki runs her back, and Kitten Kicker going to have to go back and wow. reset. This is, a, this is a way to waste a power jam here. Good job there by Matt Rowland. Great penalty killing so far, N oh. Nick. You're right. Star pass to, Can or to Wheezy, who's in there. Wheezy trying to get around. Wheezy able to do so. Good use of the star pass as well. And a little bit of confusion here as Kitten Kicker being called for a high block, it would appear, but uh, that's. Mouse trying to take advantage of that confusion there. As we're all a little confused about what happened. Wheezy is not the, the jammer now, it looks like. Um, Pivot panty on the floor. Wheezy picks it up. Mouse, meanwhile, working against Cincinnati's blocking crew up front. Mouse able to get through four or five. So it looks like it was an illegal star pass, and that, that kitten is still in the box with the jammer star. And the referees might want to have a little conversation about this one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, well they're going to sort this one out. Looks like this next this uh, review here brought to you by Derby Skins. It's a Derby Girls World. We just live in it. Derby skins are proudly made in the USA. Visit derbyskinswithaz.com. So let's talk about what we've seen so far. Cincinnati taking a little bit of a timeout to, to work this one over here. That's a smart call because with four minutes and 32 seconds in this first period, now is the time that they have to build something positive going into halftime. And they can certainly do that. Uh, essentially, as you said, Nick, you take away the power jams for da for the Dairyland Dolls, and this is an even bout. Oh, exactly right. And Wildberry Punch doing a lot of the damage out there, too. You see her in there blocking, but when they get these power jam opportunities, you know, Matt Rowland's taking advantage of it. They're calling it off. They're putting her in there, and she's just going to town. Yeah, so. and, and, and that's, the, that's the story in the bout right now. Uh, you know, the way the chips may fall in the second half is anybody's guess. And... Uh, Certainly what uh, Cincinnati wants to do right now is pick up lead going into halftime, pick up, you know, hold, hold the, uh, the advantage as much as they can, stop the bleeding, and uh, you know, if they can narrow this down to 50-60 at halftime, they are in a fine position to come out and uh, change their direction in the, in the second period. Oh, you're exactly right. Right now, too, it's also important to note the, the two big jammers right now for Mad Roland is the captain, Hayes Tank and Twos. She has 33. Wildberry Punch sitting at 49 of those 123 points right there. If you're just joining us, 123 to 33. Mad Roland up over Cincinnati with just about four minutes remaining in four and a half left in the, the first half. Mad Roland Dolls from Madison, Wisconsin in the white. Cincinnati black sheep in the black. If you have any comments you'd like to make, and uh, you can 
talk to us on Twitter. Hashtag talk to the number two WFTDA. Hashtag talk to WFTDA. And if you're on the fence and you're listening to the audio feed on WFTDA.tv, hey, why not go ahead and spend the $50 right now for the entire Big Five package? You know what? You've only missed one game so far, uh, just about one and a half if you're just listening. You know, it's Now's the time to splurge. Spend the money. Right now, this power jam continues for Matt Rowland. as kitten kicker in the box at the jammer position for Cincinnati. And this is Captain Hayes Dan Contused once again for Madison. Hayes working the wall against herself as another blocker goes off for Cincinnati. And people bleeding to the box all over the place in this game. Heavy penalty ridden game. Um, and again, the, the power jams are the story of this one as Skater Kinney's going to the box. Hayes Dan Contused called now for a back block. She's going to have to make it away around her the track before a jammer switch out takes place. <laughs> it's pretty funny here. You just saw two two reversals of play here because Mad Roland just hanging back there before and they just skate on up. They know they're gonna have to start blocking kit and kicker. Uh, well, so it's just a switch Cincinnati hangs back now. <laughs> that's the downside to that strategy though, Nick, is that you are leaving your jammer exposed to the potential of a back block. Both teams with their both teams with a skater in the box, and it looks as though Hazed and Contused is standing up. She is anxious to get back into the action. She's going to be rejoining the pack behind Kitten Kicker. Kitten around her pack, easy enough, trying to get through, working, and she's going to get called on a track cut. And that was Sugar Lumps making life difficult for Kitten Kicker, and Hazed and Contused back on the track for Dairyland. Or Mad Rowland, as the scoreboard says, oh. they are the Dairyland Dolls. Both jammers getting called on penalties here. So this will be another jammer box. Box going to be full of jammers here as Kitten. Now what do you do as a blocker in this situation, Nick? Well, you know, you, you stick with it as long as you can. <laughs> I mean, or you stand still like both these teams are going to do. Wow, though, I'm, I am a little shocked at how penalty ridden this has been both jammers in the box, so Mad Roland was the first one to reach the box, even though Kitten didn't hear the penalty being called, so Mad Roland will be released first. Two minutes left in the first period, and uh, the penalty air, we are going to have to check that inside whiteboard to uh, bring you the definite totals uh, for the second period. Yeah, right Let's now. First to rejoin the action is Hazed, Hazed and Contused. Buckhead Betty trying to get some big hits there, working on the inside. She goes to the outside, and Penta Penga just cannot make the hit there. Hayes going to be lead jammer. Getting kicker back on the track for Cincinnati, but she gets ridden out hard by Jean Lane. You know, important to note, too, Kitten Kicker are relatively new to the jammer spot. So it, it's it's not too surprising that she's picking up these penalties. She's used to being a blocker. So, again, you can get a, you know, she's used to hitting harder, you know, coming in and, and there are certain things you can't do when you're jamming. Especially with today's game, with a lot of these formations, the, the jammer is in a situation where they're very vulnerable to the back block. We want to say thank you to Wicked Skatewear for bringing you this coverage today. Wicked Skatewear is an apparel and uniform company that happens to sell roller skates and gear. Visit their stores or go to www.wickedskatewear.com. <laughs> Right now, an all-out shoving match going on as Hannah Barbaric working a front or back line there, and Mouse working a front line at Cincinnati. Cincinnati with two left in the pack. Buster Crimes holding her own in the back, working on Hannah Barbaric, making life a uh, very difficult proposition right now. Yep, Mouse out of the pack, all the way back around already. Greets that two wall of Cincinnati, goes right to the outside, gets pushed out by Ruffin the passer. A good play there. And Mouse calls it off. It's a 0-0 jam. So right now we're at the century mark. So 133 to 33 the score. Mad rolling up over Cincinnati. Again, this, a rough first half right now for Cincinnati with 15 seconds left. We'll see if they get this last jam off. This will definitely be the last jam if, uh, it's, if it gets off at all. And Magic Missile versus Wheezy. Cincinnati needs a biggie right here, Nick. 
Wheezy's working hard for it, too. Meanwhile, Magic Missile's caught in the back. Yep, Magic Missile working away. Buckhead Betty comes in for a big hit. Wheezy working against that line again up front, trying to cut to the inside, makes it through. Lee Jammer, a great job to skate that line. And that's the kind of positive that Cincinnati can take into the locker room at halftime and uh, come back and work against Mad Roland in the second half. Still not through on her initial pass is Magic Missile, and Wheezy is rolling them up now for the Black Sheep. She gets an assist from Buckhead Betty. That is a natural grand slam for Wheezy. Yeah, good move there by Wheezy. Still out in front. Going to call that one off, pick up the points before the half, and Magic Missile held scoreless on that one. So, again, a great job there as the second half clock has actually begun to run on accident, it looks like. A little Mouse. bit of a clock, clock discrepancy. Mouse and Hannah Barbaric are on the jam line just in case. So that is going to be the half. Going in, right now the score, 133-38. And everything going Mad Rollins' way right now. Mad Rollins, I mean, Coach L. Machete couldn't have planned it any better. Uh, but that's only one period of derby, Nick. Anything can happen. We're, we're well aware of that. You know, this is by no means out of reach for Cincinnati. They've come down from worse before. It's just a matter of keeping your head in the game. And now, excuse me, they did that in that last jam, and that is something positive. Oh, yeah. I mean, you want to pick up on the positives and, and do what you got to do. Now, what do you say if you're, if you're mad rolling? What do you tell your team going into the half? Boy, you don't let up a bit. This is a dangerous Cincinnati team. We've seen it. Uh, they, are, they are controlling the back of the pack fairly well when they're in a position to do it. It's the power jams that have been getting them into trouble. Of course, you also have to tell your jammers to uh, be a little more careful. Stay out of the box. Yeah, the penalties, the main story of this game, penalties and power jams, and that's what it comes down to. In tournaments, you got to play clean. And, you know, being that this isn't even a turn, it's a playoff, I'm sorry. But, uh, you know, you got to stay clean and you got to – Keep your jammer out on the, on, the, on the floor there. Wildberry Punch, of course, has got the scoring punch for the Dairyland Dolls, but uh, you've got Hazed and Contused out there. You've got Magic Missile. They've been very effective at getting lead. Yeah, they have. They, again, they're controlling the battles where they need to be won, and, and you got to take advantage of those power jams. We even saw the one there, uh, just a great job by Matt Rowland to control the power jam, bleed the time off the clock, a heads-up play. And again, we, we mentioned this earlier, they don't look like a number 10 team. This doesn't look like a 7-10 matchup to me. We are getting ready to start the second period here with the two leading scorers for their respecting respective teams taking the jam line. It's Wheezy in black for Cincinnati. Number 27, Wildberry punch for Mad Rollin. Wheezy looking to get things started early as she is pushing that front line of Mad Rollin. Pack being extended to the limit just about, and Wheezy through lead jammer. And that's just what Cincinnati needs to do. Start strong in this second period. Wildberry punch still uh, just barely getting around Buckhead Betty, but uh, Wheezy's got a full half track in front of her. Yeah, Wheezy got to get some work done here. A big lead in, in, in the first half there, 133-38 was the score. Wheezy up in the pack, pass one, trying to get around two more. And Wheezy very cautious of where the Wildberry punch was. Alertly calls off that jam, picks up three more for the Black Sheep. Heads up play there. It looks like it's going to be Sugar Lumps on the line now versus Hannah Barbaric. Hannah Barbaric ready to go for Cincinnati. She wants to maintain this momentum. Cincinnati's gotten lead jam in the last two jams, Nick. Yes, they have a good Way to go in. They got the last one from the first half, the first one in the second half. See what they can do. Sugar Lumps, we saw her in the first half a little bit. Not, not the most effective jammer on the squad, but again, she was getting stuff done just like everybody was out there. She's showing some agility in the back of the pack, but Hannah Barbaric is ahead of her right now. A score right now is 133, Mad Rowan 41, Cincinnati. But Hannah Barbaric picks up lead once again, Nick. Yep, lead jammer position right here. Sugar Lumps right behind her as they race around turn three. Pack starting to pick up some speed, working around, slowing down now as Cincinnati trying to control the way, letting Wheezy get her way through. And 
And Hanna-Barbera calls that one off. It's a 0-0 jam, but uh, plenty of action. We want to thank 2-in-1 Skate Shop for checking out, for uh, sponsoring the Bracket Bonanza this year. 2-in-1 Skate Shop invites you to take 10% off your entire order at 2-in-1 Skate Shop when you bring the coupon code BONANZA during checkout. 2-in-1 Skate Shop, shock the competition. Your score right now after that last jam, 133-41. Cincinnati still down in this one. Wheezy and Mouse are your jammers. Mouse in the white for Mad Roland. Wheezy in the black, and she is called off once again, Nick. Yep, Wheezy going to the box uh, another time here. And this is this is not what Cincinnati needs right now. They need to stay clean, and it's just not happening. That was a block in the back as Buckhead Betty goes out too. Power jam for Mad Roland, and they already have a 133 to 41 advantage. Mouse gets through for five more. Yep, Mouse looking to get something. Did didn't have a big first half, but Mouse is dangerous. I know she's she's known as one of their primary jammers. Skates How about that, line. that for a tomahawk play there, Nick? Wow, a heads up play there. That was as smooth as Sinatra as she goes right around. Oh, and she does it again. Mouse just racking them up five at a time now for Mad Roland. That puts them up 148 to 41. Cincinnati was on a roll. They got lead three times in a row, but all of a sudden, power jam Dairyland. You know, and this is what Mad Roland's doing. They're, they're extending that shield. It's like Captain America. They're putting the shield forward, racking up those points. 158 now to 41 during the course of this jam. This is a huge jam for Mouse. Well, they obviously have been practicing their uh, tactics because every time they get a power jam, they maximize it, Nick. Yes, they do. And, and again, things just falling in favor right now for Matt Roland, who is just, uh, they're taking advantage of everything they got. Uh, we have a uh, propellant theme for this next jam, Magic Missile and Nuke em. <laughs> It's mutually assured destruction here at the North Central Region playoffs. <laughs> Who will strike first? That's a good question. Who's going to get their rocket off? No pack called as Mad Rollins got the back line. Cincinnati with a micro pack of two out in front. Matt Missile trying to work her way around turn one. Turn two, one to beat and does it. Matt Missile lead jammer, but Newcomb hot on her heels trying to work her way around. Gets out of the pack as well. Newcomb with a nice looking stride there for Cincinnati. She is in the black. She is making up a lot of ground in a short period of time, Nick. Newcomb is, is a very fun player to watch. Lining her up in the sights, trying to run her down. Can't do it that time. That's going to be three and one for Cincinnati. So that's going to bring your score, I believe, to 169 to 43 if my math is correct, and it might be wrong because I'm an announcer and not a, a statistician. 166.42 is what I'm looking at, Nick. There's 25 minutes left in this one. Time for Cincinnati to get busy. Yeah, th this is not the way to come back. If you keep having people in the box, again, it's going to be tough to dig yourself out of that hole, and hey. it's a pretty big hole right now. Hazden contused now for the Mad Roland Dolls. And she is, in, oh, she's able to wow. fake out roughing the passer. Yeah, and that's going to happen when you have two people on the track right now. The last line of defense, Mad Roland just hanging back, waiting for that, that power jab to be over so they can start blocking again. Hannah Barbaric and roughing the passer. That is a tough assignment to kill a penalty with two skaters on on your team. Yeah, and <laughs> Hazed and Contus just on fire right now. It, it looks like she's got the track free. It looks like there's nobody out there with the way she's making people miss. Yeah, it's an open skate right now for Hazed and Contused. That's another five points. And uh, Coach El Machete couldn't ask for a better turn of events than this, Nick. Cincinnati trying to make up a play here, and they're, they're trying to do it right. But the pack is just coming in right now, number 14 for them. It's going to be Darling Nikki coming Nuka. in to break stuff up. Newcomb back on the track now after serving her time. But she's got a lot of ground to make up, Nick. Yes, she does. Tightens those braces on her arms there. Coming around again. And meanwhile, Hazed and Contused just on fire. Hazed and Contused, unbelievable power making it through that pack. 
just uh, running with her skates on. Nothing was going to get in her way. Maybe she uses Bones bearings. Uh, Bones bearings are the <laughs> standard by which all other bearings are measured. We want to thank them for sponsoring the Northeast Region playoffs here in Niagara Falls. Check them out online, www.bonesbearings.com. Number 27 out there jamming four, and that's going to be uh, Wild Wildberry. Wild Berry punch for Mad Roland, and Mad Roland just pulling out one powerful jammer after another right now, Nick. Yeah, they're they're really swinging with the momentum. Wheezy trying to get something started. She works that front line against a tough two. Pack becoming extended. She's finally going to be sprung, but meanwhile, Wildberry Punch on a scoring pass picks up four. She's looking to extend that lead. Murder her goes out, comes back in, and uh, Murder her definitely uh, persuaded Wildberry Punch there to call that jam off, Nick. Yep. A good play there. And again, if you're just joining us, uh, Cincinnati missing some key players today. Kay Lethal not in the lineup. Uh, for those of you that are asking on the, the Twitter feed, if again, if you want to talk to us on Twitter, do the hashtag talk number two WFTDA, uh, and you'll get right to us announcers over here. Uh, you know, joining us on the line, Hannah Barbaric and Magic Missile again. Hannah seen an inside lane and looking to take it, but Mad Roland closing up every door. That's Thrill Show up front for the Mad Roland Dolls, and she is showing her stuff, making things tough on Wheezy, but uh, there we go. Oh, no, excuse me, Hannah Barbaric. Hannah Barbaric, lead jammer for Cincy. Wow, and lickety split. Magic Missile jumps the line and through. Both packs now at full strength. Although, take a picture because it will not last in this game. <laughs> Hannah Barbaric into the pack now. She gets around Thrill Show. She needs to pick up some points, but uh, she also has to be careful. Smartly calls off the jam. Yeah, good move there three, by Hannah. Three points for Cincinnati. That brings the score to 199. Mad Rowland to 45 for Cincinnati. Important to note, too, a lot of the, the score it looks... Looks pretty bad right now, but again, most of those plays have come off power jams. And power. it's a matter of Cincinnati not skating as clean as they have been known to do. Candy Kickass ready to go for the Black Sheep, and it's Mouse once again for Mad Roland. Mouse working her way up front, trying to work around the Cincinnati line, but Nukem holding her back with Murderer, who has been on fire today. For the most part in this second period, Nick, the defense has been punishing for both teams. Oh, yeah, brutal out there. A lot of people taking shots as Murderer knocks out Mouse. Another good job in that. And Newcomb gangs up that time with Skater Kinney to uh, make Mouse uh, reconsider her career options. <laughs> Candy Kickass out trying to get in front here, but again, Haste and Contus right there, and that opens the door for Mouse to get lead jammer. Took a long time for that jam to develop, but Mouse did not give up on it. Candy out of the pack, but Mouse coming up to it. Newcomb, the, the first line of defense, and oh, and Mouse just goes to jump over it. Tries to jump the apex, but uh, she wasn't able to do that. Skater Kenny kind of cut it off. <laughs> Getting something. Wheezy coming back out on the line. Sugar lumps right there as well. For all that work on that jam, Nick, no points for either team. Still 199 to 45. 20 minutes remaining, 19-21 on the clock. So, again, if you're Cincinnati, you got to stick something. you got to pull a magic rabbit out of the hat at this point. Yeah, no time to uh, waste now for Wheezy, and she shows the urgency as she attacks that pack. Yeah, Weezy trying to get something going here. As Rough and the Pass are recycling up front with Buckhead Betty trying to stop off. Sugar Lumps in a position to get around for lead, and she does. She's able to get around Buckhead Betty, who gives Weezy a whip now in order to get her to catch up. Weezy moving fast as they get through turn three and turn four. Sugar Lumps in and through her own pack. Calls it off as Weezy takes a gigantic booty block and goes down hard. Fortunately, everybody's okay. They back up immediately, and that one came courtesy of 
wild berry punch who was wearing the stripes pivot in uh, that particular play 199 to 45 still and uh, mad Rollins favor we want to thank blood and thunder magazine they are the world's first and largest roller derby magazine find them at blood and thunder mag.com Hannah Barbaric back out there on the line, and that's going to be Magic Missile again. Magic Missile through Lickety Split, and she is around turn three already. Pack still at turn two. Hannah Barbaric out as well. Pack again three on three in the. Magic Missile hitting the pack right now. She looks at Skater Kinney, says, I want to take the outside, and how about that for a shot from Newcomb? Newcomb hits pretty hard. <laughs> I can see where you said that Newcomb is an exciting skater to watch. That was a lot of power in a small package there, Nick. Oh, yeah. Newcomb's still pretty young, too, so she's got a long way to go. She's got a long career ahead of her. Candy Kickass on the line. She'll be taking on Mouse, so it's the story of the Tiny Jammers right now. On the line, Mad Roland finally over the 200 mark, 201 in favor of Mad Roland Dolls against Cincinnati Black Sheep with 45. Mouse looking to get around, roughing the passer. Back to full strength now as Murder Her comes back from the sidelines, and uh, she wants to get a hit in right away and uh, gives one to Mouse in, in between turn one and turn two. Yeah, it delivers very well. Buckhead Betty with a good hit on Mouse to take her out of bounds. Candy looking away front and gets it. Lead jam, Cincinnati. 16 minutes, 45 seconds left in this one, and they've got to try to goad Mouse into a penalty. I can see why they call her Mouse. She is so agile. She's going to get called on a track cut there. Going to the box. Cincinnati's time to make up right now is Candy working her way up front. Pack pretty far extended. Working her way against a two-pack as Cincinnati had one trapped in the back and let her go. Candy kick-ass now for Cincinnati. And uh, holding the line up front is Wild Berry Punch oh. for Mad Roland. Her and darling Nikki and Busta Crimes putting together a pretty solid three-wall. Yeah, right now, Mad rolling all over the place. This defense, Candy just cannot work. Calls it off. And she looked back at uh, the her teammates with a look of, oh, my God, what else can I do? And said, well, actually, that's not such a bad thing to do because now you got Wheezy in the power jam. You do. And, again, I think that's what Candy was trying to say is, you know, she can't work against that pack. She calls it off. They send in Wheezy. They'll maybe try and pull something like the wild berry punch thing earlier. It, exactly. Sometimes you get that fresh pair of legs. You don't want too much time to expire in the penalty. Take advantage of it. And now Wheezy's out there. Looking to score some more for Cincinnati. It's 201-49 in favor of Mad Roland. Yeah, Mac the Knife trying to hold back Wheezy up front with Hazed and Confused. Wheezy around Lee Jammer. And Cincinnati has got to capitalize on this power jam if they want to keep this score anywhere near. Up front, Hazed and Contused wearing the pivot stripe. She is directing traffic. Mac the Knife in there as well. And that's a five-point grand slam for Cincinnati, Nick. Yep, another play and bleeding to box four. Mad Roland, that's going to be hazed and confused. And now Mad Roland's in the oh, situation sorry. where they only have two players on the track, and that is going to work to the benefit of Wheezy as she picks up five more for Cincinnati. Oh, Mouse coming out of the box like a shot, trying to work away against that pack, but Cincinnati holding back. Mouse doing an excellent job as they recycle to the front. Skater Kenny, the last line of defense, and Mouse through. She's not going to be scoring this time, and Wheezy gets through for five more, pulling Cincinnati closer with every point. There's 15, well, 14 minutes and 25 seconds left in this one now. 201 for Mad Roland, 59 for Cincinnati. Yeah, good job right here. A good move here by Cincinnati, too, trying to take advantage, get some fresh legs in. They're working against some micro pack, and Magic Missile going to take on four. Uh, for Cincinnati, two in there for Mad, Mad Roland. Roland. Anna Barbaric, a skater you want on the track if you're Cincinnati and if you're quad almighty right now. It's going to be a heroic comeback if it works, but you know they're not going to give up, Nick. Oh, not at all. Stank Girl out there with, uh, I believe, Wildberry Punch. Oh, and wow, Magic Missile makes it through first. Heads up play, Madison. They, wow. Misdirection in the pack there, and all of a sudden the going was very clear huh. for Magic Missile. She doesn't miss twice. Stank girl, though, taking on Hanna Barbaric and just holding her down. 
And Wildberry Punch able to let her, let her get around. Hannah out at last, but wow, excellent offensive play by Mad Rowland. Magic missile held up by Murder Her and her teammates in the back, and that's going to force her to call off the jam. Thank Derby for All for bringing you this live action on WFTDA.TV. Derby for All is experienced derby skaters getting you the right gear to take you to the next level. Mounting plates until Sunday morning at their mega booth right here at Niagara Falls. Thrill of the Spill North Central Region playoff action 206-59 in favor of Mad Roland. Yep, right now you see uh, out there it's going to be Newcomb jamming, and she's going to get called to the box again. Cincinnati is just, uh, they're, they're losing control here. Uh, that's the simplest way to put it. The mental mistakes on Cincinnati's half are, are what's killing them. You're giving up gigantic power jams, and it, here's another one. Sugar lumps picking up five lumps for the Dairyland Dolls. Mad Roland extends their lead to 211 to 59. Who would have seen this one coming in a 10 versus 7 seed bout? Yeah, we, we mentioned it before. The numbers don't lie. This did not look like a like a 7-10 matchup either. You know, Mad Roland come on quiet, but they're coming on strong at the end of the season and well, Sugar Lumps is going to be called off for a back block, and they're going to have a jammer switch now. El Machete has a couple of words for her as she skates off into the penalty box. Meanwhile, all the all Dairyland can do with two on the track, and they get help from Stank Girl, but off to the races is Cincinnati. Yeah, pack pretty far out right now, so we'll see what they can do. Newcomb weaving and bobbing her way around, trying to make a miss. Greets that line of Mad Roland, takes a shot, and is working her way around. Minor track. Oh, wow. Major track cut there. Called so on Newcomb, and she's going to have to sit down. Jammer switches are the uh, story of the evening right now. It's not even the evening. No, not <laughs> even. We had a lot more action to go in the second matchup of, I believe, six today. So the winner of this game will go on to face the Minnesota Roller Girls, the number two seed in the tournament. Sugar Lumps back on the track for Mad Roland, and she gets through once again. That is five more for Mad Roland. Jam times out 221 to 59 in favor of Mad Roland. Yep, 10 minutes, 40 seconds left on the period clock. But wow, the store, I'll tell you what, this game has not been clean. On, on either side, it has not been totally clean. We'll, we'll just go ahead and say that. But power jams are killing both these teams. And, you know, a clean can, it can be a relative term. Obviously, you know, there's no dirty play going on. Oh, exactly. But it's penalty-wise. Penalty-wise, both teams have been afflicted. Now Wildberry Punch in a power jam for Matt Roland, and she is going to get through very quickly, Nick. Yes, she is. Matt, or Wildberry coming up again, and this is another micro pack for Cincinnati who has been penalty ridden most of the first half and is trying to be clean the second half here. And it's 5-2 to two on the track now in favor of Matt Rowland, and that is not what the Black Sheep wanted to see. Quad Almighty scratching his head right now as Wildberry Punch hits the pack again. She's already got five. How many more will she get? Skates around Hannah Barbaric there, picking up five more. Newcomb out of the box, greets that big wall of... Mad Roland. Meanwhile, Wildberry Punch back in the pack as well, working her way through. Nice Newcomb. move on the inside for Newcomb. You got to give it up for a nice athletic play like that, Nick. Yep, Wildberry, meanwhile, goes around again. Easy breezy. Five more for Wildberry Punch. None for Newcomb. 235 now, 62 in favor of Mad Roland. We got under 10 minutes left in this one, Nick. I'll tell you, I, we also want to thank our other sponsors today, too. Green Monster. Makers of the Antic, Gumballs, Shoe Stops, Heartless Wheels, Reckless Wheels, Moto Bearings, Green Monster doesn't just give you great derby products, they give you confidence. Visit them at grnmnstr.com. That's Green Monster without any vowels. Well, if you're liking what you're seeing, talk to us at hashtag talk to the number two WFTDA uh, on Twitter. We'd love to have a conversation. Meanwhile, 
boy, Magic Missile just picked up where she left off from the last jam, Nick. I'm really impressed with this skater. Yeah, I mean, again, you see a move there, too, as the pack gets very far extended. Cincinnati holding on the back wall. Wheezy out and around. Picks she up four there. Wheezy doing everything that she can. She's wow. Got Nice move into turn number three. She picks up five more as she laps Magic Missile. Weaving around, and again, you know, 10 minutes remaining. Weezy's trying to give it all she's got here. And the pack doing an excellent job helping her as she tries to take that inside line. Gets upended by number 366. Big shot by Gene Lane. Boy, that was the shot of the day. Jammer takedown extraordinaire for Mad Rowland. And the, the pack collapses there as Wheezy able to get around the outside on turn one and two. Magic we Missile recycling to the back now as she has been pushed out by Skater Kinney. Four more for, Matt, for Wheezy. And pivot for Mad Roland. Charlie Hustle's going to have to sit down. She's called off for a penalty. 2.43 now. Two, oh, the points continue to roll my bad 246 mad rolling 75 for cincinnati yeah that we aren't we aren't math people here we're just announcers so we apologize for our scoring in deficiencies i guess we'll call them hannah barbaric for cincinnati now going against wild berry punch the scorer of the day for mad rolling yeah wild berry punch literally delivering the knockout punch here today doing all the Everything needs to be done, proving why she's the alternate, 14 USA. Working right now against the back wall of the Cincinnati Pack, becoming very thin as Hannah pushes forward, trying to get around one to beat. The last one is Mouse. She picks up lead, jammer in turn number four. Mouse has to regroup, tries to make room for Wildberry Punch, but can't quite do it. And give it up to Murder Her, who takes out Wildberry Punch and skates backwards again. Murder Her having the game of her career right now. I'm impressed with Murderer's control in the back. She is a jammer killer. And, uh, you know, just the power jams piling up against Cincinnati. But they've got some uh, they got some positives to take from this bout, Nick. Oh, yes, they do, for sure. Right now, Hannah Alcho of Cinco, or Barbaric, rather, as she changed her name, tried to jump the apex, got caught up in the pack again. Wildberry Punch, meanwhile, working her oh, way. Oh, a around. nice pirouette by Hannah Barbaric to pick up that final point. That's going to bring the score up a little bit more, too. It looks like 250-81 the score as we enter the six-minute mark. Well, with six minutes to go, you can tell that all of these skaters are still in fine condition, and uh, they must have gotten some good nutrition, Nick, because I don't see any signs of let-up on any of these skaters. Not at uh, all. You know, I, I bet they uh, know about Derby Life. Derby Life is a proud sponsor of our action today. It is roller derby nutrition at its finest. Check out derbalife.com. Jamming for Cincinnati, Pent Up Anga. Pent Up Anga Panga trying to work her way against our front wall, and that front wall is just collapsing the inside pocket for. for Defense Panga. solidifying for both teams. Hazed and confused for Matt Rowland, having a pretty difficult time of it, too. Yeah, Sugar Lump's out there holding down with Stank Girl. As Pentapanga trying to work her way around, but Matt rolling out first. Skater Kenny had to let Hazed and Confused go. Yeah, Hazed having a, a great game too. The captain of this Mad Rolling team, Panga out of the pack at last, working her way around, trying to greet that wall. Meanwhile, Cincinnati pushing out the captain, Hazed and Confused. Jam over 250 right now for Mad Rolling, 82 for Cincinnati. Mouse ready to go, and Buckhead Betty now taking the track, taking the jam star for Cincinnati in the black. <laughs> Everybody loves the Buckhead Betty jam. Buckhead Betty, normally one of the blockers for Cincinnati, and Mouse going to be out there with her. Oh, two, two very different styles there, Nick. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Betty trying to, trying to skate clean here. Mouse gets out first as it's a micro pack for Cincinnati. Two out there. It's going to be rough in the passer in Newcomb. We have a question on the feed as well. Is, is the, uh, the paid stream compatible? We will find out the answer for you, Derek M. Buckhead Betty out in scoring position now. Mouse looks at the team. She And El Machete says, let it roll. Uh, smart play on the part of um, Ed Roland at this point. Just let that clock go. The 
worst thing that they could do is try to uh, stop the clock and then have some catastrophe happen. Oh, exactly right, you know. Granted, you know, Cincinnati's not going to come back in this one, it looks like. It's safe to say when you're down by close to 200, uh, the game's a little bit out of reach with three minutes. If you have another 60, maybe we'll we'll catch up here. But 259-82 the score right now, so Matt Rowland is content to – and Buckhead Betty takes a tough spill, and she's going to need a little bit of attention. She turns over onto her right side as the uh, medical technicians are going to take a look at her in just a second. Yeah, this is uh, not a good thing for Cincinnati either. Buckhead, a very strong blocker for the team. We don't want to guess as to what happened. Hopefully she just got the wind knocked out of her. Well, she's a stalwart for the black sheep there's mm -hmm. no question about it and it looks from her facial expression like she's going to be okay and there you see her getting up and the crowd gives her a round of applause she's had a courageous game today but uh you know she doesn't want to risk any further injuries that's for sure nick yeah that's that's exactly right we hope she's going to be okay because the winner of this game will go on tonight so that looks like it's going to be mad Roland taking on minnesota tonight i believe at 8 p.m and you can watch this game uh, live on WFTDA-TV. If you want to splurge, I would highly encourage it. You've only missed two games if you are not watching the live feed today. Uh, splurge for the whole thing. Splurge exactly. for the big five package. Get the five. Yeah, that's, that's the way to go because you're going to have the rest of today, all day tomorrow, all day Sunday, plus the other region playoffs and championships for $50. I can't think of a better buy. Oh, yeah, and you know what? We just found out it is iOS. Uh, compatible, which means you can watch this on your iPad or your, you know, whatever else you got that, that has internet streaming. Should work. Stank Girl now jamming in her first jam for the bout for Mad Roland, and she is going against Sailor Scary. Sailor Scary for the Black Sheep. And both, both coaches giving the jammers an opportunity to show what they've got. Yep. Scary, a relatively new member for Cincinnati, actually transferred from Rosie in Indiana. So she's getting a chance to jam here, doing a good job as she gets lead jammer position, comes around, greets the pack already. Sailor Scary with a uh, lot of enthusiasm getting around. Wildberry Punch has got to be a thrill for her, Nick. Yeah, I'll tell you what. She Alligator takes out Sailor Scary there, but yeah. When you get around Wildberry Punch, that's something to be proud of. That, yeah, I would. Uh, it's something you might want to tell your, uh, tell your kids about for sure, or tell your friends. And she's still working. Look at Sailor Scary now. She's got Alligator to beat. A lot of promise from Sailor Scary right now. As Stanker out of the pack as well. Again, traditionally a blocker. We've seen her all day. She's been killing it out there. And they've got to let Scary go as she comes around. Micro pack for Cincinnati with Skater Kinney in June with a cleaver. And that's going to be that clock. Sailor Scary showing her love for Derby and her love for her teammates, and uh, she picked up some points for Cincinnati. 260 now in favor of Mad Rollin. Cincinnati with 91. We've got Railroad on the line in black for Cincinnati, and darling Nikki getting ready to jam for Mad Rollin in the white. 260 to 91. You know, yeah. we talked about it before. You can never tell what's going to happen in a bout on paper. One of the great things, though, is you can play a roller derby board game now, Nick. <laughs> that is for sure. Jammer Up. It's the first strategy board game based on modern-day roller derby. They're sponsoring the action this weekend at the Thrill on the Spill. Thank you, Jammer Up. Look them up at jammerup.com. And how about darling Nikki? She picks up a natural grand slam in her first jam of the bout. Yeah, darling Nikki been doing a great job up front too. Another uh, strong blocker for Mad Roland as Railroad is working her way through the pack for Cincinnati. Boy, El Machete might uh, want to reconsider and uh, put uh, put the star on darling Nikki's helmet a little bit more often. She seems to have some skills there, Nick. She, that she does here. We also want to mention Five Stride, online, in-store, in the city that never sleeps, owned by Bonnie Thunders and, oh, my God, WTF. Fivestride.com. Visit them online. As this jam continues, we're down to 12 seconds left on the clock. Darling Nikki still working her way through, able to get around again, and Railroad gets taken down pretty hard there. Darling Nikki picks up another four points now. She looks over at the uh, 
bench for Mad Rollin. The uh, period clock has expired. There's still 34 seconds left on the jam clock. Darling Nikki with another five points. Yeah, right now this game, I mean, again, coming down the final seconds here. Looks like 18 to go. Darling Nikki not letting up. Railroad okay. going to have to sit down now. Darling Nikki with another five for Mad Rollin. And the Dairyland Dolls looking to try to get to uh, 300, but with uh, four seconds left, I don't think they're going to make it, Nick. I do not think they're going to either. And that's it. Those are four whistles. That should signify the end of the bout. And uh, pulling off a major upset, the 10 seed Mad Rollin Dolls pick up a W, and it's a big W, 289 versus 91 for the Black Sheep of Cincinnati, the seventh seed coming in, Nick. Yep. Uh, again, we said it before. It, it, the Mad Rollin did not look like a seventh seed team. They've had they've come on strong at the end here. They beat Bruce City. Uh, again, it's the second upset of the day. I can't wait to see what else happens. It's a, it, 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 it's a theme that we've heard again for this North Central region. And uh, any of these teams are in a position to take down any of these other teams. And the action is just going to continue to oh. get better and better as the weekend progresses. Danny Mack here with Mouse, the star tonight of Dairyland Dolls. Mouse, I know you would debate that you were the star, but a very good effort by your entire team as evidenced by the scoreboard. What do you think uh, was the turning point for this one? When did you really know you had it? Thank you. Um, I have to say that I'm just one out of 14 people out there, and on any given jam, I'm just one out of five. That's that's how we operate. That's how we that's how we build our philosophy as a team. So I mean, I appreciate the compliments, but <laughs> that's how I feel about it. Um, well. Yeah, we've been looking forward to this game for a long time since he's been one of our, especially tournament rivals, um, the last several years. So we never really know exactly what to expect from them, but we've been watching footage and just doing a lot of scouting and brought everything we could. Yeah. Now what's next for you? You're, you're moving on to your uh, next opponent. Um, this has been so far upset right central here. coming in as a 10 seed and knocking off that higher seat higher seat how does that feel is that sunk in yet it feels amazing yeah. um you know last year was kind of bittersweet it's always a privilege and an honor and a hugely fun experience to play at tournaments but finishing at the bottom seed was not necessarily what we had anticipated so um we knew coming into this that if we finish any higher than 10 it's a victory but our goal is to go all the way we want to go to the top and you think you can do that absolutely excellent well, what's next? Uh, what's uh, now? You go back into the locker room. What's that speech going to be? What's the? How do you move from here? Well, I'd have to ask my captains that. Um, <laughs> El Machete and Twisted Halo have been doing a good job with leadership all year long. Reckless has been rallying our bench. I got to give them a lot of props. I'm not the captain of this team. Um, I just bring my own experience and my own input as you know, one out of 14, like I said. But I definitely share a lot of good feelings and a lot of love for everybody for dedicating all their energy into this sport. So. We're just going to carry that forward into the next opponent. Great. Mouse, thank you very much. Congratulations on the win. You guys are moving on. Yeah, thanks. All right. Bye. Thanks, guys.